Hey guys, uh, welcome back to a, another video. This one is going to be about the Great Depression and uh, what the Great Depression does for Adolf Hitler and his kind of rise to power. So, I mean, as you know, as hopefully you've picked up on this course already, Great Depression is a really big deal. Um, I say it all the time in class, it is the single most influential event of modern human history, right? So many things are going to happen due to it that, um, you know, you can kind of easily make that claim. But as we talked about in the last video, uh, the Dawes Act and money coming in from the United States and, and, and the Young Plan and all of these things are going to happen economically in Germany in the mid to late 1920s. So Germany is, is steadily building itself throughout the 1920s and, and getting back to this kind of uh, cornerstone of the European economy, uh, the world economy, really. Um, when the economy was going good, the Nazi party doesn't really have a basis to grow on, right? Uh, what I was saying uh, probably like two videos ago now is that, you know, the support comes from the middle, right? People like to be in the middle. Yes, it might be rightist. Yes, it might be leftist. But they like to be in that political middle. That is a comfort zone, right? It's going to take something for people to polarize, for people to radicalize to the poles of those two sides of the political spectrum, right? So when the economy is good, you have a lot of people in the middle. So the, the Weimar government is going to be very, very, very popular for most people. Yeah, people are going to always talk badly about the government. There's always going to be something done that they don't see completely eye to eye with. But for the most part, people are going to reside in that middle, which means that the polls are not going to grow. The communists are not going to grow on one side, and the Nazis are not going to grow on the other. However... When that stock market crash happens, that is the polarization event in Germany, just like it was for Japan, right? If you remember, the, the Paris Peace Conference is going to be that polarization event for the Italians, okay? Um, Germany, because of things like the Dawes Act, because they became so internationalist in the 1920s, um, their economy is going to be drastically hit by the stock market crash in the United States, right? Um that Dawes Act, right, that ring that um, I tried to depict to you guys um, is going to go away, right? It's, it's not going to be there anymore. There's no more money coming in. Um, so those infrastructure projects are going to have to go away, which means a lot of uh, uh, people are going to be laid off, right? Which means there's no more money to go in and have that consumer-based economy. So shops are going to close, factories are going to close, um, unemployment levels are going to skyrocket in Germany. All of those things that were going right are now going to be completely reversed. And, and, and Germany is in a really, really, really bad way um, after the stock market crash in the subsequent 1930, 31, 32 kind of time period. Um, the Weimar is going to do something very similar to what America is going to do around this time. And the rest of the world is going to do around this time. And they're going to try to place tariffs on things. But that just does not work. All right, The depression is just going to worsen. All right, here you see kind of a, a graph, right? And this is this is from the United States, but this is the stock market, right? This is the peak. This is this is the valley, right? You see, kind of the the low point of the Great Depression is in the is in 1932, but you see how drastic these drops are, right? And Germany is going to suffer from that, just like the United States and the rest of the world is. All right. Here is where Hitler is going to capitalize. Here is where that public speaking ability. Here is where that propaganda here is where that um this scapegoat mentality that he has is really going to gain him a lot of support right so he's going to double down on the i told you so right it was a weimar right uh, we have to get rid of versailles um uh the november criminals are, are it's their fault right the jews it's their fault the communists are trying to vie for power we have to get rid of them so those same scapegoats are going to come up again in these early speeches of 1930 1931 okay um, and, and Hitler is really going to target that middle class that used to support the Weimar, that now they're angry at the government, they're out of work, they're unemployed, all of those things, he's going to target them. And you see the polarization, right? The communists are going to try to get him, but Hitler, through his speaking ability, um, is, is, is really going to deliver and get a lot of those people to gravitate towards the Nazi program and... Uh, that lower middle class of people, that huge demographic of people in any country is going to start to, to lend themselves to the Nazis. All right. Um, so here we've got these are electoral votes for um, for the Reichstag in Germany. All right. As we see here, let's look at our kind of key here. Um, 
the Nazi Party, the NSDAP, as we kind of outlined in our last video, is right here. It's this kind of bluish, purplish, dark blue color, right? So in 1924, right? 1924. Things are going well. Don't have a lot of representation, right? 1928, 1930, right? Here we see the effect of the Great Depression on the Nazi Party, right? The, the low point of that depression is 32. Boom, look how high it runs. All right, another one in 32. We're going to talk about the reasons why um, a little bit later. But still, overwhelming support, overwhelming uh, uh, popularity for the Nazi party, especially compared to other parties in Germany, right? And then 1933, that's going to be when uh, Adolf Hitler declares himself the Supreme Chancellor of Germany here in Germany. But we'll get to that later on. But you, you, you cannot ignore the effect that depression has on the Germany, uh, on, on the Germany, on the Nazi party of Germany. This video, watch it, all right? Click on the PowerPoint, watch this video. It's, uh, it's really, really, really solid in going over numbers and facts that you will need in order to make that case of why the depression was so kind of uh, pivotal for Adolf Hitler coming about. So watch this video on your own. I'm not going to click it and watch it with you in this video. All right. Um, so this is more of what I've been saying. All right. Um, the, it's it's the polarization event in Germany. Um, uh, in 1932, Hitler is actually going to run for president. He is going to lose to Hindenburg by a very close margin. But we're going to see overwhelming support for the Nazi Party in the Reichstag, and that's what's really important right now. Is they are going to get um, uh, they're going to get a majority of the seats in that not a majority. I'm sorry. They're going to get an overwhelming support in the Reichstag, right? Um, so that's in in, uh, in in January. Um, in November, they're going to lose some seats. We're going to kind of talk about why um, when we get to the Hitler portion of this in Unit 8. But still, they have a lot of seats. Let's go back to that graph, right? They lose some, but they have more seats than any other party in the Reichstag, okay? A.J.P. Taylor, very famous historian, only the Great Depression put the wind into the sails of the National Socialist. All right, coming up probably next week, you guys are going to have to do a little bit of historiography and figure out kind of how historians are going to perceive Hitler's rise to power. And A.J.P. Taylor is going to be one of the historians who say that it is the Depression. That is the reason for Hitler to come into prominence the way that he did. All right. Uh, we will get in, yeah, we'll get into this stuff at another point in time. I just wanted to go over the Depression and the importance of the Depression on Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. As always, be good.